This tutorial aims to present a general roadmap on how to test a given series for convergence. Let us start by assuming we have given some series. First, we should check whether the given series is of a particular type. For instance, is the series a p-series, a geometric series, or an alternating series? Each of these three cases are very well understood and we possess the necessary knowledge to study them. If our given series is none of those three types, we need to use more general testing methods. If there is nothing special about the series that suggests the use of a particular test, it makes sense to start with the divergence test. Only series which fail this test can converge and will therefore require further consideration. If the divergence test does not answer our questions, we may move to the next set of tests, that is, the ratio test, the root test, and the integral test. These tests are more complex than the divergence test, but they have the ability to tell us in many cases whether or not our series converges. The ratio test is often useful if fractions, powers or factorials appear in our series. The root test is useful if only powers show up. And the integral test can be applied if the underlying sequence of our series corresponds to a function whose integral we understand. Hence, depending on the situation, these tests may tell us what we want to know. On the other hand, they may be inconclusive or not easy to apply in a particular case. This brings us to our final set of tests, the basic comparison test and the limit comparison test. These two tests are the most sophisticated tools in our toolbox as they require us to compare our given series to a second series, which we have to come up with and need to be able to understand. Let us look at a quick summary of the four steps. The steps are based on both the difficulty of the test itself and the difficulty of recognizing when the test is useful. In that sense, P-series, geometric series and alternating series are the easiest to recognize. And once we have recognized them as such, it is not hard to check whether or not they converge. The divergence test can always be applied and is often a quick first pass to see if the series has actually the potential to converge at all. Ratio test, root test and integral test are more demanding but also more powerful and they work best in particular situations. Finally, comparison tests are our most sophisticated tests as they require experience and knowledge that goes beyond the given series. Overall, that gives you a rough idea of what you can do with a series if you don't know what to do. However, this does not mean that you always have to apply the divergence test before the ratio test or the root test before the limit comparison test. If, after having gained some experience, you think that the ratio test is the test to use, then that's the one you should go for. Also mind that often several tests may be perfectly appropriate for the same series. Let us now look through a variety of examples. First, consider the series of 1 over n squared for n greater or equal to 1. We observe that this is a p-series where p equals 2. Our knowledge about p-series tells us now that this series converges. Next, consider the series of minus 2 to the power n for n greater or equal to 0. This is a geometric series where x equals minus 2. As here x is less than minus 1, we know that such a geometric series has no limit. The series of minus 1 to the power n over n for n greater or equal to 1 is an alternating series. Note the change of the sign in each sequence element. Hence, we apply the alternating series test, which reveals that this series converges. Next, look at the series of n over n plus 1 for n greater or equal to 1. First, we notice that this series is not a p-series, geometric series or alternating series. So we decide to try the divergence test. This test now shows that the series does not converge. And as the underlying sequence is positive, the series diverges to infinity. Now consider the series of 1 over n factorial for n greater or equal to 1. And let's say we don't know what to do. We first check if the series is a p-series, geometric series or alternating series. As it is none of those, we move to the divergence test. 
However, this test fails and so we need to try a different test. Among the tests in the third step, I choose to try the ratio test, as there is a factorial in the underlying sequence. Then, according to this test, our series converges. Of course, we could have tried the ratio test right away, and with more experience we probably would have. In particular, there is no necessity to always try the divergence test if we think we know a more suitable test for our given series. Here, practice and experience are very beneficial to make the right choice. Finally, consider the series of 1 divided by 2n plus 1 for n greater or equal to 0. Again, let us pretend we don't know which test to pick. We check quickly that this series is not a p-series, geometric series or alternating series. If we try the divergence test, we find it fails. If we try, for instance, the ratio test, it turns out to be inconclusive. So let us try the basic comparison test. We compare our series to the series of 1 divided by 2 times in brackets n plus 1 for n greater or equal to 0. This test then reveals that the series diverges to infinity. Overall, it is about picking the right test, but also about not giving up if we pick an unsuitable test, which can always happen. Then we just try another test. As always, practice will improve our ability to identify the more suitable tests.